So what we are thinking of, what we are now talking about is a school of thought. That's the next uh, stage. If you bring, if you go around the world to the liberal leftist places in universities which are all over the world. I don't think there's any country which doesn't have a large number of these people. India has a particularly large number of them. But you'll find them wherever you go. And you, you bring them together into some conclave, gathering, meeting. Even though they never met each other, and they're trained in different languages, in different countries, in different universities, by different professors, you will find there's a huge resonance. There's a huge resonance among them. You know, so if you have if you have 500 NGOs and think tanks and uh, organizations uh, similar to ours uh, in the liberal left wing space, and they're all working independently of, of each other, there will be some issues and contradictions and tensions and all that. But by and large, they're working together. Now, if you create a Therefore, if you create a left-wing think tank like CSDS in Delhi, I'm just giving you one example. There's about 30 prominent think tanks, left, all of them are left-wing. If you create a left-wing think tank and you want to have multiple independent scholars, you don't have to worry too much about to direct confrontation and contradiction because they're all learned from the same framework. They've all learned from the same school of thought. The foundation is like that. It's analogous to, in our situation, if you put together a lot of people into a think tank on Vedanta, Advaita Vedanta, let's say, particularly, and you just bring different, different experts who are all trained from various places. The point is that more or less they'll have some co commonalities. They'll have common platforms, common understanding. They'll argue, debate, of course, with each other, which is healthy. But the, you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, let's work together because they will be already together. There is a framework that Adi Shankara put together. Now, when it comes to modern times, we don't have a framework. We do not have a kind of a, what I'm, what I'm branding and what I'm calling now and developing a Swadeshi framework, a Swadeshi school of thought, where like Marxism is a school of thought, and you can teach it in many different ways, and tens of thousands of people have been produced, and it keeps evolving into various branches. Uh, we are now developing, the next thing we are doing is we are developing a Swadeshi school of thought. And in this Swadeshi school of thought, we're putting together a large amount of material, a lot of framework, in a very systematic way. It's involving a huge investment, and we need a lot of funding and a lot of people. And this will cover several topics. It will not only be in books, it will also be in online e-learning courses that people can log on and take a course and understand these things. It will also be in the form of video clips that people who want just an average general knowledge can uh, watch some videos and, and do this. So this idea of a Swadeshi school of thought uh, is going to r make our movement robust. So there will be a platform, an intellectual platform. And then there can be hundreds of different groups, 100 NGOs, each going and doing their own thing. As long as they subscribe to this common framework, They'll all be able to do, so we can get the best of decentralization, which Indians like, and a common point of view.